welcome back everyone, Toysha's here, and I am back yet again for yet another New York Comic Con 2024 Toy Booth Roundup. We're going back to NECA toys. I know, it's not just NECA, but that was the most accessible for today. There's a lot of people at New York Comic Con, which, that's great, but then it also makes moving around and getting any type of decent photos and videos to share with you fine folks at home quite troublesome in many ways. But rest assured, we got a whole couple days left to get some great footage. Leave me a comment down below on what you specifically would like to see me check out. I'm gonna go to all the usual booths, we'll do the roundup for everything, but just in case there's something in particular, uh, maybe I'll go by and uh, grab some photos. I wouldn't mind doing that. Real quick, as always, it will pertain to this video as well teamed up with Entertainment Earth, and together we are doing a $250 gift card giveaway throughout New York Comic Con weekend. So for every video, like I just did a NECA Toys TMNT walkthrough, talked about it, pretty much any video I will be counting as an entry, and the basic entry for YouTube is just, hey, what's been your favorite reveal of New York Comic Con so far? There is no right or wrong answer. Just tell me what you like, what you want to see. If you would prefer to perhaps follow me if you haven't already on YouTube, you can do that as well. It's not going to help you win, but it will help you look at cool stuff every single day. So that's always a plus, right? Just have your mouths salivating for all the cool new action figures that are coming out on a daily basis. But you get the idea. We already looked at NECA Toys with their TMNT offerings, so now we're going to check out the rest of the booth. We'll have some fun doing so. First and foremost, it's the ghost with the most, Beetlejuice. So this entire shelf is Beetlejuice figures of old and Beetlejuice figures of new. The new ones, I'm going to be honest, are kind of few and far between, although you can kind of gather that they will be doing more Ultimates Beetlejuice figures by what they're showing, and there's a playset to talk about as well. These are the Toonie Terrors from the new Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. They are pre-posed. They have sometimes some articulation. Maybe the arms are moved, the head will move, something like that. But yes, you can pick these up now if you'd like. I believe pre-orders for them are available at most places. I will put applicable pre-order links down below if you would like to grab them. If I'm being honest, eh, not really for me. No, they're, they're really not. However, the more ultimate style Beetlejuice figures with now extra articulation, or at least we'll say modern articulation, yeah, those are more up my alley. And I really like what they're doing here with this first offering. It's the Exorcism Beetlejuice. I think it looks pretty cool. I like the deco. I like the paint that they got going on. I think he looks crisp and clean. And I think the likeness to Michael Keaton is spot on. Beetlejuice, it's funny how he translates to action figure form from the movie. It's odd to me. It's Nike almost like an impossible task in many ways. These are obviously the older Beetlejuice figures that came out years back and they've reissued them, so you have two to choose from. Those are on store shelves now, if you'd like. You got the handbook for the recently deceased because, well, that's where basically your wallet's going if you're a Beetlejuice fan. So this is going to be the Dante's Inferno Play sets. It just was unveiled when New York Comic Con started. It is a NECA store exclusive. It is $150 if you would like to grab it. It's a pre-order, and like I said, it's available now. It comes with this exclusive Beetlejuice with all the spikes sticking out of him, but you get quite an impressive playset, which is always nice. It is electronic, so it will light up right there. You can see the lights as each one goes. Keep in mind, it's a little bit faster than what you're seeing. I did kind of slow this footage down just so it's not jarring where we're just kind of jutting all over the place. I think a slow and steady stream is always the way to go. But yes, Dante's Inferno Room with the exclusive Beetlejuice with the spikes sticking out of him. 
150 bucks on the NECAstore.com if you'd like to grab them. Now I'm going to zoom in really cool. And then you have, which is a, such a cool line. I'm really enjoying this. Before I left for New York Comic Con, I was kind of setting up a little display for Halloween. I will finish that when I get back. But these are basically the first and second waves of the Ben Cooper Halloween costume kids. I think that this is just a lot of fun, and as I think anyone who's a fan of these have kind of thought and discussed, they have such potential, right? You can really have fun. You can push the envelope, and in one of my recent videos, I had said, you know, they were kind of mentioning things at San Diego Comic-Con, and everything that they were talking about, I was thinking, yeah, pull this off. I think people will be stoked, and as you'll soon see... They pulled it off, and I think that uh, a lot of people who are fans of these are definitely going to be stoked because we're not just dealing with old-fashioned movies, which, if I'm being honest, I like the old-fashioned movies, I like the old-fashioned costumes, but now you can see they have Captain Spaulding, they have Thanksgiving with the John Carver, I think it is, I just saw that movie, <laughs> it's so dumb, but it's great, it's mind-numbing horror, right? You just kind of sit there and go, oh. I'm interested in seeing uh, Smile 2, though. I was supposed to go to a screening and didn't get a chance to go because of going to New York Comic Con, but cannot wait to, to see that. I was a huge fan of the first one. Anyways, back to these Ben Coopers. You got Nosferatu. You have Krampus. So, yes, if I'm being honest, I kind of like the more 70s, 80s, old school Halloween costumes, but I think that this kind of lends itself to an audience that maybe doesn't really resonate with that era of Halloween. At least this will be something where you go, oh, I love that. I love Krampus or, oh, I love House of a Thousand Corpses. I mean, they have Sam from Trick or Treat. That's a great movie and I really like Sam. So I'm torn in between. And one part of me is like, yeah, the other part's like, dude, it's Sam. Come on, just you know you're gonna get these anyways. Your nut job completist. Come on, you gotta get them. But like I said, more than just old school horror. Now they're incorporating all the modern horror classics. Likewise with DC Comics, which <laughs> I'll kind of do the slow reveal, even though you already saw Superman. But you have Superman, which. I don't know why this works so well in terms of just these are the kids dressed up as their favorite heroes and villains. The thing I love in particular is that you have a Super Friends pillowcase as the trick-or-treat bag. That, that's some thinking right there, NECA Toys. I really like that. Then you have the whole Wonder Woman costume, which... Yes, they are like spot on to that old school just weirdness of wearing these types of faces. You got the Joker. He's the Ben Cooper supervillain. You have the superhero Batman, of which, of course, Batman has a huge emblem. It says Batman right on there. And excuse the video for just a second here. I was kind of fighting the masses trying to get a good, clean video here. But then we also have Batgirl, of which she's the same deal. She's got the Bat logo. And it has Batgirl. If you hear sirens in the background, I'm in my hotel room. And yes, that's the lovely, lovely ambiance of New York City. Just hearing the sirens every two seconds. Hopefully everyone is okay. Moving on to more of the Ultimates Horror. We have Nosferatu in his alternate costume. <laughs> I thought that was a... A weird looking one. And then we have ones that we have seen thus far in the past. Ones you already have on your shelves. So that's kind of something that basically we've all already seen or you already have in some fashion. But I got to say, these actually go quite well with the Ben Cooper Halloween kids. I think that those are quite fun to pair up. You have the mummy, Imhotep, Karloff. That just looks pretty cool. And then you have the Invisible Man, which... I gotta say, the, the stuff for the Universal Monsters is fantastic. The Nightmare Before Christmas figures, I am actually really interested in these. Now, I do have a lot of the Diamond Select. It may not be, you know, I say this now, I'm like, ah, yeah, they're pretty good. Probably will change. Not to say that these figures 
don't look good. But as I already have kind of the ones that I want, I really don't feel the need to start over. But if you've never had Nightmare Before Christmas figures, hey, this is your chance to grab some. So we have the Santa Claus Jack. I really like how he's got the sack. He's got the gifts in there. They all really resonate with that Tim Burton artwork with the Henry Selleck sort of animation style. Jack as just Jack Skellington, which is the most classic that you could get him. He looks fantastic. He has a fantastic head portrait to him. He's just that mischievous skeleton bone daddy. And then you got all the lines, which are nice, crisp, and clean. And he comes with zero and that terrifying jack-in-the-box pumpkin head clown thing. Whatever that laugh in that movie. <laughs> Great movie, but you know what? I will say this about Nightmare Before Christmas. Didn't like it the first time I saw it as a kid. Didn't understand it. It wasn't until years later where I go, oh, yeah, I kind of like this. And I think that's the way with a lot of people. I didn't know back then how to feel about it. I don't think a lot of people knew how to feel about it either. The pumpkins, these are really cool. It has all those cool Tim Burton designs to them. Of course, what's a Jack Skellington without Catherine O'Hara? You have Sally I guess it's Sally Doll, I think. Maybe we'll just call her Sally. But you have Sally, and I think, again, the paint is on model. Everything is on model, and I think that's where, not to say Diamond Selects didn't look good. They still look good. But I think NECA adds, first of all, the, the limbs on Jack are a little bit thicker, which it may take away from the aesthetics of the character, but it may help them function better as action figures. That's the thing. The mayor looks really cool. Again, with the double-sided face, I obviously couldn't get around to seeing the other face, but it is there. You have his brooch that has the, <laughs> it's the spider, basically. The mayor, little medallion. And then you have the book, of course, which I assure you will focus any second there. There we go. We can zoom in, and I like how each of the names are written. So again, from the mayor to Sally to both of the Jacks, I think that's a great start to the NECA Toys Nightmare Before Christmas line. In particular, just to point this out, the background is the boxes that these will come in. I don't know why this works so well. It's just the black box. Everything is in white. But there's something to that. I think that that just looks very elegant, very well done. This is really nice packaging. That's all I'm going to say. For those of you who are Sesame Street fanatics, of which I'm going to be honest with you, love Sesame Street as a kid. Not something that is for me, unfortunately. But I do appreciate the design and everything that is going into these figures. So with the counts, of which... I want to do the voice, but I won't do it. But he comes with his candelabra. He's got the number two. He's got cloth goods. The idea of these, and I think what really stands out, I remember talking with the NECA folks over at San Diego Comic-Con. What I think they really achieved here is that the obvious plastic of these figures is sculpted so that it looks like felt. It looks like the puppetry material and that is saying something it's not just smooth there's texture to it the hair everything looks and it looks like it feels like cloth or fabric or something like that which is crazy to me so they have definitely achieved something great here with their upcoming sesame street line although i will say it's not for me i know a lot of you people are like oh my god sesame street it's cool if you like it. I just, I'm not going for these. But like I said, very cool that they are even doing them. Then we got a good look at the upcoming Pee Wee Herman Ultimates figure in the background. You can see like the classic tunes that they do in that style. You have the pterodactyl. You have extra head portraits. I'll be honest. I think that it might be a case of Uncanny Valley sometimes with Pee Wee Herman where if you look at his face, and I looked this up before I did the video, I would say the face that he has on right here is Pee Wee Herman. But I think that if you move one little line, one little wrinkle, your eye tells you like there's something off, right? There's something very weird here. But at the same time, I do honestly think that they've captured the look 
of this character, of the actor, of Pee Wee Herman in general, the suits, a little bow tie, everything else. You can hear the character's voice when you look at this, especially with the backdrop. Everything is alive in that house. It's terrifying. And then you have Elvira, which she comes with the dog. She comes with the couch. We have seen these before. I know that some of the NECA crew did a thing with Walmart to kind of show off some of their, not necessarily Walmart exclusives, but just things that are coming up for the holidays. So you can grab their new holiday, Elvira. You can get this with, you know, the big old bazooka and everything bazooka is fine i'll just make the joke you know what i'm saying there i was just talking about one bazooka but there might be several in this photo i feel like vincent price is judging me on that joke he knows anyways vincent price and elvira i think that they both look good very well sculpted very well designed you have some of the texas chainsaw massacre folks which i would touch with a 10-foot pole, not because they're bad-looking figures by any means. It's just, that movie is just something else. Also, the hills have eyes. Especially, like, the most recent one, something like that. It was just terrifying. All of it, just terrifying. And then you have the Hammer films, Dracula, and then you have all, like, the head portraits here. You have Peter, was it Peter Cushing from Star Wars? That's how I'll always remember him, but... Yeah, these both look fantastic. I think Christopher Lee, he would be stoked to see that. That guy was heavily into the occult and all kinds of weird stuff. That is very fitting for someone like Christopher Lee, methinks. Then over here, this has gotten quite the attention. And I, for the life of me, I could not get the correct angle to get rid of all of the glare. So I do apologize in advance, but this is... The Toonie Classics, Toonie Terrors, What We Do in the Shadows, which I saw the original movie. I've watched a little bit of the new television show. It's it's pretty friggin' funny if you like that type of humor. So, yes, Toonie Terrors, NECA Toys will be doing, <laughs> which is just awesome. They're coming soon. What We Do in the Shadows, all kinds of weird and very relatable action figure type characters alien romulus again as i said didn't care for the movie and i say that in a way that like i liked elements of it but overall no i did not care for the film and that's okay i really wish we would have seen more of the original xenomorph i think they really were on to something and it's kind of a bummer that they kind of killed it off that way you know i was kind of like wow that was like the most deadly thing ever and it's just kind of hanging from the rafters, unfortunately. So, yeah, but I would tell you this. While I didn't care for the movie, I think the new action figures and what NECA has done look pretty cool so far. And I am interested in seeing more of those. So that's my juxtaposition there. Then we had a look at... These were figures that we've seen, uh, let's say, on display at San Diego Comic-Con. They had some Iron Maidens. So you have a box set for their world tour. The guy next to me and I'm not, I'm not going to put the sound in, but he was going off on, the, like, he could not contain himself. He is so excited for these figures. So it was just kind of fun just listening. That's part of the fun for me for Comic-Con is while I'm videotaping or while I'm taking photos, it's the conversations that I hear. And believe it or not, all the conversations that are kind of geared toward negativity online and everything else, when it's in person, I always feel like it's such a completely different thing and i and i love that i love that people are more inclined to be like you know that's it's always the way right in hand you get you pictures videos all that stuff you judge it you nitpick and then you get it in hand and you're like you know what son of a gun that's pretty cool anyways we're talking about alf now alf is coming out with several new figures one of which is already hitting targets which has an amazing old school nintendo atari system which is always awesome. No pogs though, Negatoys. What's up with that? Why why has Alf not returned in pog form? But regardless, thank you so much for tuning into my video. I had an absolute blast making it. Absolute blast at New York Comic Con. I hope you guys are all having fun. And for those of you who couldn't make it out, I hope you are all having a blast at home, living vicariously. I will have more videos coming up this weekend. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.